Okay, for the next, it's uh, uh, the sundry uh, switch uh, MLEG with uh, uh, the HCI. MLEG for HCI solution. Uh, <clears throat> okay, first part, uh, it's about the MLEG uh, introduced. Uh, as we said before, the MLEG uh, multi uh, chassis link aggregation group. Uh, this is a, a cross device link aggregation uh, group. Uh, it's a, a mechanism that can implement the cross device link aggregation. For example, uh, usually we make the uh, link aggregation uh, group. We just uh, uh, aggregate the two ports in the same switch together. And for example, in the switch uh, port 1 and port 2, usually we aggregate uh, uh, these two ports uh, together. And it, this is the normally uh, link aggregation group. But what if, uh, if uh, you want to aggregate the ports in the different switch across the uh, device, we can use the uh, MLEC. The performance uh, has been improved from the uh, single board level to the uh, equipment level uh, forming a dual active system. This is the advantage of the uh, uh, MLEC. <clears throat> High, higher uh, availability to improve the link uh, availability from board level to the device level. And uh, uh, the second advantage is to uh, simplify the networking and uh, configuration. MLEG can be understood as the uh, horizontal virtualization technology that can logically virtualize two devices uh, do home into one device. And uh, after, mm, after we uh, <clears throat> make the MLEG, uh, we can use the MLEG to uh, for for independent upgrade, the two devices can be upgraded sub, uh, separately to ensure that uh, uh, one device is uh, working normally, uh, the other uh, the other almost uh, uh, which has almost uh, no impact on the running business. Uh, for example, in the uh, financial uh, in the bank, uh, if we configure the MLEC for the two uh, switch. And uh, we want to upgrade uh, the switch. <clears throat> the first, we can uh, we can disconnect uh, the cable uh, between uh, the uh, master devices, master switch, and the uh, backup switch. Uh, we, ju we just uh, uh, disconnect. Uh, okay, we just disconnect the backup switch and upgrade upgrade it or uh, uh, manually. And then we connect it. Uh, we connect the uh, uh, the switch, uh, which is already upgraded in the network. And to disconnect the uh, to disconnect the connection of the master switch. At this time, uh, the master switch, when it uh, detects uh, this failure, it will um, uh, <clears throat> the uh, backup switch, uh, which which is already upgrade, will become the new master, and uh, then uh, it will change to uh, for the data forwarding. It will change to the uh, backup switch. So uh, at this time, we can uh, upgrade our uh, master devices, and uh, for the business now, it's uh, forwarding by the backup switch. So uh, for this network, uh, it's. Uh, uh, the business, uh, does, it doesn't matter, uh, it just still works. And after we upgrade the master devices, we can uh, <clears throat> uh, we can connect uh, the master devices to the internet, uh, to the network uh, directly. And as, at this time, uh, after uh, the master devices and uh, the uh, backup devices compare their priority, uh, they are finding that, uh, okay, uh, now the master device is already connected and uh, his priority is uh, higher. So uh, it will 
uh, return uh, the data traffic uh, rights to the uh, master devices. So uh, uh, this uh, then it finished the uh, upgrading of the two devices. And uh, uh, in this process of upgrading, uh, the master uh, the whole network it has uh, uh, it's always uh, working. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, the I'm like uh, it can help a lot. So what it can do uh, when we uh, uh, when we deployment uh, deploy uh, the switch with our HCI. As we, uh, as we know that for the uh, connection with the uh, HCI, we has uh, uh, they need the mining uh, mining switch to connect it. So uh, actually, for now we have the four uh, deployment cases. The first, <coughs> uh, there are uh, currently four standard deployment scenario. For a smart switch with and uh, the uh, HCI uh, hyper uh, convergence uh, infrastructure. Uh, the first is uh, the network uh, plane uh, separation scenario. Um, the second is uh, the network plane uh, multiplexing scenario. The third is uh, the independent uh, storage uh, private network scenario, and the fourth. Now, the first part is uh, the independent storage and the uh, management uh, scenario. So what, what's the difference uh, between the four uh, deployment uh, scenario? Okay, uh, here is the details. <clears throat> As we know, for the, uh, <coughs> for the HCI, usually uh, it has, uh, usually we need to, uh, we need to config the storage network and uh, the management network and also uh, the business the user business network and uh, the data communication uh, which uh, network so uh, for this for kind for kind of uh, uh, network it's required for the HCR system okay let's see the uh, difference between uh, the four deployment cases <clears throat> The first one, it's a network plane uh, independent scenario. Actually, the top lodge, uh, the top lodge, we can see the uh, small picture. Uh, for this, uh, for this pic, uh, from this picture, we can see that uh, uh, in this deployment case, uh, we use uh, eight smart switch and uh, form a three MLAC group. Uh, for the MLAC group one, uh, it's used. Uh, it's used for the management network. And for the MLAC group 2, this one is used for the business network. Uh, for MLAC group 3, used for the data communication, uh, VX, uh, VX line uh, network. And, uh, all, uh, and uh, another two switch con connected as uh, the uh, storage uh, network. And all this uh, for network is uh, independent because uh, they connect uh, to the different uh, group. Uh, for the second one, it's uh, network plane multiplexing. Uh, for this solution, only uh, we can only use two smart switch uh, and form like uh, uh, and form uh, uh, form one and like group, and then we divide it uh, different uh, VLAN for the different uh, network. But actually. All the business, all the data traffic, uh, running uh, in this in the same MLAC group. So this is a multiplexing scenario: the storage network, the management network, business network, and the v, uh, VX LAN network, uh, <coughs> running in one MLAC uh, group. Uh, for the third, it's a storage network independent independent scenario. Uh, for this one, we use uh, four smart switch <coughs> to uh, form and form one uh, MLAC group. Uh, and uh, the 
this one uh, I'm like a group uh, running the uh, we running the uh, <coughs> store uh, we running the management network business network and uh, VX LAN network in this uh, I'm like group and uh, for the uh, private uh, for the storage private network we use two switch to connect it uh, so. Uh, for the management network, business network, and uh, VXLAN network, uh, these three networks is uh, multiplexing, and the storage network is independent. Uh, for a star, for the uh, fourth, it's uh, the storage and uh, management network independent uh, scenario. <clears throat> uh, for this one, uh, for use for this scenario, uh, we use six switch and uh, two M like group. I'm like a group one for um, independent uh, management uh, network and uh, two switch for uh, storage uh, network, uh, storage network, for storage private network. And the other two, uh, the other two switch from uh, uh, MLAG and uh, running the business network and uh, VXLAN network. <coughs> so, uh, for the MLAG group 2, we uh, multiplexing the business uh, network and the VX line network. Okay, uh, let's see uh, the details of uh, the first scenario. Uh, the first scenario is uh, the next network plane independent scenario. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, the topology here uh, in this. Uh, independent scenario, we use the H switch, uh, A sundry smart switch, and uh, we have uh, uh, three MLAC groups. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we connect uh, uh, the A cloud server, ETH1 and ETH2, uh, to uh, management network switch 1 and uh, uh, switch 2. Uh, <clears throat> ETH uh, two and it is three connected to the business network switch one and uh, uh, business network uh, switch two and it is uh, three and uh, it is four connected to uh, it is four and it is five connected to the uh, <coughs> VX line network switch one and uh, switch two of uh, the storage private network uses two smart switch uh, separately without configuration unlike uh, this one used for the redundant redundancy. <clears throat> uh, there is one note when you use only one storage uh, switch uh, to deploy the private uh, uh, storage network or use two storage uh, switch as unlike or stacking must use uh, the single uh, single switch link aggregation because uh, because uh, for this scenario, for the uh, storage uh, private network, if you use uh, one switch, uh, you need to choose the single switch link aggregation. Uh, if you uh, make two switch together, uh, stacking together, or uh, MLAC together, uh, we also think it as the one, uh, one switch. So uh, we, can, we need to choose the single switch link aggregation. We we'll use two independent uh, storage switch, uh, just as the as this topology shown uh, here. We didn't make an like uh, like for the storage network group. So this is two different, uh, two independent storage switch, and uh, then uh, for this situation, we need to use uh, two switch link aggregation mode. Uh, that's the switch we uh, deploy me uh, deploy in the. Uh, in this topology, uh, for the management switch and the business uh, and the user business switch and the data communication uh, VXLAN uh, switch, we use the model RS five three zero zero twenty eight T and four F. Why we choose uh, this model? Because mm, mm, for this model, it has uh, four uh, ten gigabit SFP plus. As I know, um, the connection uh, the uh, Transit, the tra transmission speed uh, to the HCI should be uh, guaranteed. So uh, we need to choose the higher uh, speed uh, port for connected to the HCI. And uh, usually we use 10G SFP+. Plus. Uh, so we need to choose uh, the model from uh, Sandry, which has uh, 
the uh, 10 GSFP plus part. And for the storage switch uh, here, uh, there is two types. Uh, each one is okay. Uh, we can choose RS6300 uh, and uh, 24X and uh, uh, LI15X. Uh, this model with uh, uh, 8GE port and uh, 15 10GSP port. Uh, here is the device uh, port list uh, about uh, how it connected. For the, um, uh, <coughs> uh, for the management uh, switch one G G one connected to the A server H uh, zero, <coughs> as uh, for this one uh, we can make it as the management network. For, uh, and uh, for the business, uh, for the business switch one and switch two, uh, uh, G uh, G one port we connected to the A server ETH two and ETH ETH three. Uh, this one work, works as the business uh, work as the business network. And uh, actually, we uh, aggregate uh, these two ports uh, together. Uh, for the data communication. Uh, Switch one and switch two connect to the ETH four and the ETH three of uh, uh, a server. Uh, for the storage, uh, we didn't make the MLAC and uh, use uh, ETH six to connect to the uh, X forty five port uh, fifty four five port as the storage port. So actually, uh, if you deployment deploy the uh, top lodge like this. Uh, for uh, this device's port list, it can uh, you can have a reference uh, how to connect it and which port connected to uh, which port. Uh, it will be uh, really clearly. Uh, so uh, after we uh, already designed uh, this top logic and already decide which port connect should connect to which port. Uh, okay, the next part is about how to. Um, uh, how to make the unlock? <clears throat> uh, as before, we already. Uh, I think we already uh, uh, teach uh, teach you about uh, how to make the unlock in another PowerPoint. But uh, uh, for the connect with the HCI, we still uh, we still need uh, more uh, configuration. Uh, for the basic configuration, the first is to uh, Logging into the switch management and uh, management page for the fight access point switch the management port uh, the default port it's uh, uh, for the management port it's uh, default IP it's uh, uh, zero point one uh, for the non management port uh, the normal port of the switch if you connect it you can uh, use the device diagnostic tools to scan that you will find that uh, the default IP it's uh, one point ten and then you can uh, log into the one point ten page to the uh, wipe uh, to the wipe management page. Uh, account and password is on me. <clears throat> After we log in, uh, the first we need to config the management address for this switch. Uh, so we go to the VLAN interface to add the uh, VLAN uh, to add the management VLAN, the root uh, configuration uh, VLAN interface, and to add the new. Uh, VLAN interface. Uh, after we add the new VLAN interface, we need to config uh, the uh, port, uh, config the port VLAN to divide the VLAN to the port. Yeah. Okay. After we uh, uh, finish this action, uh, we need to uh, check uh, the HMP snooping whether in the multicast traffic management whether this one is enabled. If it's enabled, we need to disable uh, this function. Uh, the next part is about uh, uh, the next part is about to disable the uh, uh, loop prevention in the uh, STP configuration. <clears throat> okay. Uh, after uh, this five step, we already uh, confirmed that uh, the switch can start uh, to make the. Uh, I'm like a group. Uh, so for the first, uh, for the first step to configure the link aggregation, 
for the first step is to configure the link aggregate support for the uplink. Uh, so we go to the Ethernet, in the, uh, Ethernet management uh, uh, management menu aggregate interface to aggregate uh, two interface uh, together for and make it as the uplink. Uh, and for the uplink, uh, it should be uh, with the uh, it should be connected with the uh, uh, 10G. Uh, SFP plus uh, MLAC port uh, and uh, all the uh, switch peer link it should be the 10G SFP, uh, SFP plus uh, aggregate port also for the peer link uh, it should be uh, for the peer link ports uh, switch for the peer link uh, uh, switch ports it uh, uh, should be keep the same with uh, the the MLAC port. For example, before if you set the MLAC port, it's a trunk. For the peer link, you can uh, set it to trunk. And uh, for the uplink and the peer link, uh, should allow uh, the switch management VLAN uh, because you need to uh, you need to allow the management VLAN to manage the switch. And uh, for the VX line MLAC uh, and uh, the peer link, it should be. Config the uh, jumbo frame, config the jumbo frame to uh, two thousands. Actually, the default uh, the default uh, value is uh, uh, one thousand fifty uh, five hundred eighteen. Uh, but it's uh, if you want to, uh, but but we want to support the jumbo frame, so we need to uh, modify this value to uh, two thousands. Okay, after we uh, aggregate this port, we go to the high availability, high availability MLAC and to uh, start the MLAC. In the uh, master devices, uh, we set the switch priority to 100, the MLAC ID is 100. Uh, and uh, in the standby, uh, standby switch, the MLAC ID uh, also should be the 100. Uh, MLAC ID should be uh, keep same in the uh, in the master and in the standby. Uh, also, uh, the switch priority of uh, the standby devices should be uh, bigger than uh, should be bigger than the uh, master devices because uh, for the MLAC, uh, the lower the switch priority, the higher the priority. <clears throat> And then we need to choo uh, choose the. Uh, okay, uh, next is about the. Uh, I'm like, uh, you can. There is some uh, notes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, for, there is some notes. For the first, we need to make the I'm like ID uh, keep the same. The second, we need to uh, make the uh, priority lower in the master devices. Uh, then, uh, then the priority in the uh, back in the standby, uh, standby device. <clears throat> if you if you not if you don't uh, if you don't modify the priority, you will uh, it. Uh, <clears throat> so if you don't modify the priority value, uh, so the priority value will be same, and at this time it will try to compare with the MAC address. The smaller, uh, the smaller MAC address uh, will be the switch with the smaller MAC address will be the master. Uh, for the cable live ports, uh, it won't participate in any forwarding behavior of uh, MLAC. Uh, and uh, its function is to uh, shut down all the uh, non peer link ports uh, of the standby device, of the standby switch when peer link fails and multiple, and multiple um, master born and uh, <clears throat> so uh, it's recommended to config the keep live port it must be a layer 3 interface uh, that will require a split uh, IP <clears throat> and uh, for the first we need to uh, make sure that the uh, peer link port must um, peer link port is configured peer link, uh, uh, peer link is uh, Used to uh, negotiate the packets and uh, transmit uh, the 
uh, traffic uh, interactively. Uh, also, for the peak, for the peer link uh, failure, is an option uh, is an option configuration. Uh, for this one is to uh, for this uh, for this parameter uh, is to uh, choose the ports which is which are reserved uh, when the peer link is failure. By configuring the peer link uh, failure, you can select the ports that are uh, not be shut down by Keep Alive. If you don't uh, if you don't configure this uh, config uh, this one uh, when the peer link uh, failure, it will uh, shut uh, it will shut down all the uh, non peer link ports. So uh, for usually uh, for some situation, we connect the uh, switch in to the uh, storage network to the storage network, and uh, we need to ex uh, exclude the port which connected to the storage network. If we don't do like this, uh, when the peer link uh, when the peer link failure, and it will also uh, try uh, the switch will also uh, shut down the port which connected to the storage network. Uh, for the six for, for the sixth one sixteen for the six. Uh, we need to enable the unlike protocol message forwarding uh, in the switch two, uh, because uh, when the hybrids need to forward through SW two, uh, this function need to be enabled. Mm, the ne the next one uh, after we uh, make the uh, unlike. Uh, after we started the unlike, and then we uh, go to the uh, port management to uh, uh, to choose to choose which one as the cable live port. Uh, for the cable live port, it should be the layer two layer three port. So we go to the port uh, port management and to modify the port to layer three port. Uh, <clears throat> For example, just now, uh, we change the GE10 to the layer 3 port and uh, specify the IP address. Uh, in the MLAC settings, uh, peer link ports, we can uh, to select the GE10 ports. And then, after we uh, config uh, all of the settings, we can check the status of the master and standby in the uh, system status. Uh, now the unlike status is already uh, is is already uh, successful. Uh, <clears throat> the next uh, after the unlike uh, uh, establish it uh, successfully, and then we start to aggregate uh, the port in the different uh, uh, switch. So uh, we go to. Uh, we can set the, uh, we can go to the M like ports and to new aggregate ports, uh, for the M, uh, for the name uh, M like one, uh, chunk ID uh, sixty four, and then we select the member ports. The member ports can uh, select the member ports in the local switch. Uh, actually, for these settings, uh, we also need to go to the standby uh, devices and also to. Uh, new the aggregate port and uh, to make the settings same with the master device for the trunk ID and the aggreg uh, and the aggregation mode of the same group of MLAC ports it must be the same and for now no more than eight ports of the same aggregation port in the MLAC group. Uh, for the third part, it's the jumbo frame. Uh, it must be uh, set to two thousands uh, for the uh, data communication network uh, for the VXLAN. Yeah, to support the jumbo frame. After the master switch is uh, configured, uh, the same MLAG configuration must be uh, performed on the standby devices. So uh, we just need to keep the configuration same with the. Uh, same between the uh, master devices and the standby devices. 
Uh, the next one is about uh, this one is about the restore configuration. You can um, go to the maintenance uh, restore configuration to backup the configuration. Uh, actually, if uh, there is some uh, uh, problem, you can uh, restore the uh, configuration. Uh, for the next one, it's about the network plane uh, multiplexing scenario. For this scenario, uh, we only uh, we we only use two uh, switch and uh, uh, to use two switch to form like to form uh, one M like group, and then we divided different uh, uh, VLAN for the different uh, uh, network. For example, the VLAN ten this is for the management network. VLAN 20 for the VSA LAN, VX LAN network, and uh, for um, uh, for the VLAN 30 uh, is for the storage network. <coughs> for this solution, uh, for this solution, when the two mm, when the two storage ports of the two switch are connected to the same VLAN, uh, we use a single single switch link aggregation mode when accessing different VLAN. Uh, as shown, uh, we should uh, do switch link aggregation mode. Uh, here is uh, uh, the uh, device uh, port configuration. Uh, for the configuration, uh, how we config in the two switch. Uh, uh, and then, uh, actually, uh, for the configuration, mostly uh, it's the same concept with uh, the first uh, scenario. Uh, and uh, there is some notes for this kind of, uh, for multiplexing scenario. Uh, all the switch up link should be connected with uh, 10G SLP uh, MLAC. Uh, and uh, the pair link should be uh, 10G SLP aggregate port. And uh, should be the trunk port and allow the uh, business uh, user business VLAN and uh, management uh, uh, VLAN. Also, uh, for the peer link, uh, because uh, we only have the two switch, the peer link for uh, uh, the packets forwarding, so the jumbo frame should be uh, should set to two thousands to support the jumbo frame. And um, for the business for the business uh, M like port, it should be uh, trunk and allow only. All, all the business VLAN. Uh, VX line uh, MLAC port should be uh, should also to uh, modify the jumbo frame to 2000s. Uh, for the two storage ports of the two switch uh, connect to the same VLAN, we use a single uh, switch link aggregation. And uh, uh, if it's the different VLAN, we uh, configure it to, to the uh, do switch link aggregation. Uh, also, in this scenario, the peer link failure it must be configured on the standby switch to ex exclude the storage network port. Uh, the storage network port interface uh, will be reserved uh, when the uh, service port of the standby switch is closed due to the peer link failure. For the port connected to the uh, to the uh, storage private network should be excluded and uh, um, not be closed when the peer link is failure. Okay, uh, the other settings for the network plane multiplexing scenario. The, uh, the other settings uh, it's uh, the same with uh, uh, with the independent scenario. Uh, for the network, for the storage network independent scenario, uh, actually the topology is here. <clears throat> for this solution, uh, we use four smart switch and uh, set up only one MLAC uh, group and use uh, and multiplexing uh, the management network, user business network, and the data communication network uh, in. Uh, one MLAC group. Uh, for the storage network, we use uh, the other two switch to connect. Uh, 
also here it's uh, the uh, mm. port list configuration. Uh, how it connected and uh, what configuration it's uh, made in the uh, in the switch. For the storage network independent uh, scenario, uh, the nodes, uh, there is also some uh, uh, some nodes, but actually uh, some nodes, it's, uh, uh, it's not the it's not same, but uh, not big difference with, uh, uh, with others. For example, um, we need to make sure that uh, uh, switch uh, uplink should be connected with 10G SFP plus MLAC ports. Uh, and uh, for peer link, uh, need uh, for the peer link need to be uh, 10 GSP uh, plus aggregate port and the trunk port allow uh, the business VLAN and the management VLAN also need to modify the uh, jumbo port uh, jumbo frame to uh, two thousands for the business VLAN for the business mam like port it should be uh, trunk and allow all business VLAN. Also need to support the jumbo frame. Uh, the other settings is uh, also the same. Uh, the next is about uh, the last part. The next is about storage uh, management network independent uh, scenario. Uh, from the top lot, uh, for this scenario, we use uh, six uh, uh, six switch. Uh, to switch as uh, the storage network and connect uh, independent to the iCloud server. And uh, for uh, the other two, uh, I'm like a group. Uh, one I'm like a group is uh, for uh, management network. Uh, the other I'm like a group is for the um, business user business network and uh, for the data communication network. <coughs> uh, Actually, uh, when um, actually the um, uh, actually uh, when the when only one uh, storage uh, switch connected, uh, we need to choose a single uh, switch link aggregation. Uh, for this situation now. Uh, two store two switch for a storage network is uh, um, separated is separated so uh, when you choose a dual switch link aggregation mode uh, also here is the uh, port list the conger uh, the port the port configuration list so in the future if you uh, have the project uh, which need to deploy uh, the uh, so smart sender smart switch with the HCI you can reference to uh, to this file okay for the notes um, for the notes uh, access uh, for the access switch uplink and the peer link uh, should be trunk and allow relevant VLAN uh, such as the management VLAN for the uh, also to enable the uh, jumbo frame. <clears throat> uh, VXLAN, VXLAN management MLAC port should configure the jumbo frame. Uh, actually, for the nodes, uh, when you uh, when we have the uh, project and need to config, and then we need uh, uh, to check it uh, carefully uh, about uh, uh, what port as the management VLAN port as the management port and what what port as uh, connected to the VXLAN ports and to uh, make sure that uh, which port need to transfer the jumbo frame and to modify the uh, <coughs> modify the value to 2000s. Uh, most of the configuration it depends on the actual scenario. Uh, actually, the last part is about the switch aggregation commands of the different brands. Uh, first, the link aggregation it need to uh, needs to ensure that uh, the aggregation mode at both ends should be the same. For example, 
uh, at this end, if you uh, use LACP and the opposite end, you need to uh, use LACP uh, two. If at this end you choose uh, menu uh, menu aggregate and at the opposite end, you also need to uh, use the the uh, use the menu menu uh, aggregate. Uh, if some uh, switch are configured for the menu aggregation, the code switch should also be uh, menu aggregation. The configuration of the different models uh, of switch from the uh, different uh, manufacturer is different. Uh, so let's see some details about uh, the different uh, switch aggregation commands. Uh, for the Cisco switch aggregation command, uh, to uh, now if we want to uh, aggregate uh, F1 and F2 uh, manually aggregate, uh, the command should be here. <clears throat> ah, okay. Actually, for the, for the commands, uh, if we uh, encountered uh, the situation, need to configure the uh, device. It need to configure the uh, port for other brands. Now we can uh, find this port point and for reference and configure it. Uh, the last part is about the result confirm. Uh, just now we. Uh, already enable the MLAC, uh, also set the MLAC and connect it to the uh, HCI. So, uh, how to check whether uh, the MLAC is config is configured uh, successfully and uh, the network works? Uh, so, how we test it? Uh, there is uh, seven uh, uh, steps to uh, check uh, to uh, confirm the result. The first. When the MLAC master and backup are online, and then uh, the uh, two the two uh, HCI devices are connected normally. Uh, if we disconnect the interface of uh, uh, MLAC member switch uh, to the uh, MLAC master devices, uh, the two HCI devices still connect. If we disconnect uh, uh, the interface of MLAC member switch to the MLAC backup devices, uh, the two HCI devices are connected. Uh, are also connected normally. Uh, if we disconnect the upstream uh, interface of, of uh, MLAC member switch, uh, connect to the MLAC master devices, uh, there is no problem with. Uh, uh, two HCI devices serving the internet. And uh, if uh, we disconnect the upstream interface of uh, MLAC member switch connect to the MLAC backup devices, and uh, the HCI devices also can connect to the internet. Uh, if we start the master devices of uh, MLAC member switch, the HCA will uh, still uh, online. If we start restart the unlike member switch, the two HCI uh, still online. <clears throat> After we check, uh, uh, we can check the results uh, each step by step. After we check all the uh, seven steps, and uh, there is no uh, no problem uh, of HCI still working online or still can uh, serve in the internet. It means our configuration. Uh, Already success. Uh, actually, uh, the, here is some uh, uh, switch diagnosis. The first, uh, it's uh, to show FTB uh, to check the MAC address table. Actually, we can go to the uh, switch uh, command line to uh, check the uh, running config. The second is to show the interface zero to check all the interface uh, info. Uh, and uh, for Sandra switch, it has the fed mode and the fit mode. It show, show mo uh, we can input the show mode to uh, check uh, what, can, what mode it works on. Uh, the show VLAN zero is to check all the VLAN information. <coughs> So how we connect to the uh, switch uh, command line? Uh, we need to 
use the server board configure to uh, we need to configure the console board uh, and uh, actually the the board rate is uh, uh, 1152.00 mm. and uh, please remember that we need to disable the flow control after we uh, enter the uh, command line uh, we can go to the uh, we can start to config uh, config terminal mm, go to the config mode and uh, for the management mode uh, fat or fetch you can uh, change the switch from the fat mode to the fade mode or from fade mode to the fat mode also you can uh, uh, reset the devices to the default Uh, I remember as be, uh, I remember um, as before we have a, a common list uh, in the uh, last time training. So uh, if you have uh, if you have a chance, you can uh, connect to the Thunder switch and uh, go to the command line and to uh, use the command to uh, make a config. Mm, yeah, just to have a try. Uh, okay, for my part, uh, for my part, it's already finished.